Today we're celebrating Grinchmas by making Grinch green sugar cookies from Seuss Landing at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Florida. We'll then take those cookies to the next level by making the Grinch ice cream sandwich like those served at the park. Grinchmas is celebrated every holiday season at Universal Studios Hollywood and at the park in Florida. Join us as we celebrate like a Who down in Whoville. Let's get started. Some people may think, like a Grinch, that it's too cold to have an ice cream sandwich. But really, if you think about it, an ice cream sandwich is basically just milk and cookies combined. Unless you're serving a warm milk, a steamed milk, which mm -hmm. would be really good with a sugar cookie. If you're bringing out a cold glass of milk, why not make it ice cream? It's like the next level mm -hmm. of, of milk and cookies. Something else that we've seen, a uh, photo shared by WDWNT.com. You can see this really cool powdered sugar crackly texture on the cookie. And that's usually done by rolling the dough in a powdered sugar and cornstarch mixture okay mixture Mi mixture mixture <laughs> so you roll it in that put it on the pan and kind of smash it down just a little bit okay and it'll look like it has a little dusting of snow on it the cookie basically or the ice cream sandwich excuse me is basically just two green cookies smushed together with a vanilla ice cream center and then it's got a candy heart on top because you know the Grinch's heart eventually grows from like three sizes is too small to like regular size. It is cherry flavored, and so we're gonna try and replicate that as well. You could <laughs> possibly find some cinnamon flavor hearts, but we wanna go for that cherry. You know how on birthday cakes, how they have those sugar candies that you spell out happy birthday? Yeah. But those are just frosting that has hardened. The idea is we whip up some frosting, same recipe from our last video, like pipe it out and shape it. With that, we'll wanna do those first. And on a different note, putting it on the cookie. Yeah, do you think the best way to do it would be to squeeze a little bit of frosting on there and use that? kind of a, is it an adhesive to stick it onto the cookie. We'll yeah. already have a little bag of frosting. You can just glue it right on. Cool, let's do it. All right, let's go grab those ingredients. Okay. All right, so we have all of our ingredients for our frosting here. Three-fourths cup powdered sugar. So we're gonna throw that in there. Maybe a little less than three-fourths cup because I got a bunch all over the counter. Okay, and then the butter, right? Yes. So we've got two tablespoons of unsalted butter and softened. So you might wanna use that. No, where's the fun in that? Okay, I need it. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're good. I didn't spill any more powdered sugar. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's go ahead and throw these in here. So we got one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract. So we're gonna throw that in there. And then one teaspoon of milk. And then one half teaspoon of cherry extract, which will give us that delicious cherry flavor we're going after. If you can't find extract, you can even get a little packet of cherry flavored Kool-Aid. Oh, that's a good idea. Just put a little bit of that. Oh no. It's gonna look like a winter wonderland in uh, here. The butter's not softened enough. Butter's been sitting out for a few hours. It is December, it's a little bit cooler. <laughs> I'm making a real mess. Uh, okay. Is there any left in the bowl? <laughs> There's a little bit. The butter is a little cool to the touch. We have had it sitting out for a few hours. I'm gonna microwave it. So I ended up doing 10 seconds. Oh yeah, the butter's a lot softer. Okay. It's kind of crazy. I can already smell the cherry. It yeah. smells really it good. It smells really good. <laughs> We're going to put a few drops of red food coloring. Actually quite a bit. We don't want pink hearts. Yeah, we want them to be cherry red. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be doing six drops today. Two, three, four, five, and six. Six drops of red food coloring. We are not gonna put blue food coloring in this. No, no matter what I say, don't <laughs> let me do that. Nope. <laughs> oh yeah. No, there you go. I wanna go a little bit more. So this takes us to eight drops. There's seven and eight. All right. I think that's about right. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we're going to need to pipe these okay. into the shapes of hearts, thinking we can use parchment paper for that. I've actually made a template that we can use. Hmm. Yeah. Here's the template that I made. Awesome. <laughs> so if you see, there's a three inch cookie and a three and a half inch cookie. I overlaid the photo to try to figure out the right scale of the heart. Oh, nice. So, so here's the three inch cookie size. Here's three and a half inch. We're going to put this template on our website, mm -hmm. print it out at 100%. This will give you like kind of a measurement of how big your cookie needs to be as well. Take your sheet of parchment paper, which is semi-transparent, lay it over the top, and here you have a template. Fill up a Ziploc bag or a pastry bag. So you can just pipe right over the shape. Yep. And you'll have the heart. You could always make your own alphabet letters and make like a mean message like the Grinch would send on a cookie. Ooh. Yeah, 
There you go. That works. Okay. Cool. Take this over here. I feel like at this point we're getting really good at piping with a plastic bag. With this, we're just doing a little fine line. I've cut a tiny little corner off of the bag. I'll do a few and then I'll pass it over to you. Oh, did you see that? I shifted the paper. Whoops. Mm -mm. Not I'm good. Not right. All right. Let's fix that. One more thought that I had was that you do this. Actually, oh, and then just kind of yeah, keep a steady of, stream of the frosting. Yeah. You can tell that it's actually shaped like a heart and not like an internal organ. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like intestine, so I did these last night. Oh, okay. Match, so I kind of have a little more practice. So let me, let me show you the technique that I figured out really quick, and then okay. I'll have you okay. give it a try. So the trick I found for the R was to do it like a one line like that first, okay. and then going, oh, I was actually doing it the other way. <laughs> like in reverse for the camera <laughs> then you do the curve and then you do the little okay that looks terrible <laughs> we really don't need to do the r's for this no we don't so let's just focus on the heart this is not gonna be good oh no <laughs> so i can tell already just from doing this first one you gotta keep the pressure consistent on the pastry bag or else it will come out in different sizes uh -huh. <laughs> Just remember, hearts come in all shapes and sizes. And hearts are an internal organ, so it really, it's very, fine if they're not perfect. Very realistic <laughs> hearts. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so while Bo is working on these hearts, please like this video, please subscribe to our channel, and please ring that bell because then you'll be notified when we post new videos. We'd love to have you watching our channel. Give us some advice in the comments. Please, we need it. <laughs> or if you have other ideas for different foods that you want us to make. Yeah. Or activities and crafts. Or if you tried this out and you had a fun experience, tell us about that too. Right now, this is looking like a bunch of pieces of chewed up bubble gum. Pretty bad. Oh, that looks tender. And as it settles, they kind of flatten a little bit as yeah. they harden. I'm sure that there are also candy molds you could use to make a much better looking heart. Just wait, <laughs> in, a, in a few minutes, you'll, you'll see the ones that I made. In yeah. They looked a lot like this when they started you'll see what they can they're a little bit more forgiving once they've hardened let's get started on the actual cookies cool let's do it we've placed all of the ingredients out to hopefully mm -hmm. speed things along so here's our bowl we're going to mix the dry ingredients together first and then add the wet ingredients and use the hand mixer to finish it up yep be careful not to over mix it you'll get a really dense cookie it's time to preheat the oven to 350 degrees fahrenheit uh, we're using an oven that takes 90 seconds to preheat so we can push that off a little bit later so it's not beeping at us the whole time yeah <laughs> okay so first off is the flour uh, this is uh, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour so I'm gonna put that in a little more careful so we don't get a big cloud <laughs> of, of dust and then two cups of powdered sugar and then Sean could you grab those smaller yes oh ooh, the powdered sugar is the dangerous one yes, and of course is. I go <laughs> it's so light that it just like floats out of the bowl and notice <laughs> we're using powdered sugar in this recipe rather than granulated sugar. We don't want gritty sugars as yeah. you're biting into the cookie. That makes sense, you wanna keep it smooth. Yeah, powdered sugar is chemically the same thing, it's just a little more fine. Next we've got one tablespoon of baking powder. So we're gonna throw that in there. Take that from you. Thanks. And then we've got one half teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna toss that in there as well. Slowly start to mix it in. It is very powdery. It's got that powdered sugar, so be careful. The reason we're doing this is we don't want that baking powder to clump up when we start to add the liquids to it. Mm -hmm. So this helps make sure that's kind of dispersed before we start adding the liquids. Sometimes you can put, oh no, <laughs> shut up. I'm trying. <laughs> Here we've got half a cup of unsalted butter. I can tell right now it's been sitting out for about two hours but room temperature during December is a lot different <laughs> than in the summer. Yeah. So we're gonna throw this in the microwave. That actually was 15 seconds in the microwave. <laughs> this is a whole stick of butter, which is half of a cup. Yep, and you wanna make sure it's soft too, cause then it makes it so much easier to stir it in there. You don't want it to be like melted, but just having a having it be softer is a lot easier. And you're gonna want, you wanna kind of break it up a little bit and get it into pieces a lot of people will slice their butter up but for me it's like you're putting it in soft mm -hmm. you can just use your spoon that you're gonna stir it with just use the spoon to slice it up a little bit oh already got it on the table egg number one. Oh no okay we're good okay good no eggshells i was worried for a second there. 
<laughs> I'm going to combine the one egg first before we put the other one in. Okay, it's so tough using the spoon. I always just do the mixer and I end up making a big mess anyway. <laughs> but I feel like we're making a big enough mess with the spoon. We might yeah. as well have just been doing it with the mixer. Does this call for more wet ingredients? Because this seems really dry. Oh, there was a bunch of butter in the spoon. Uh, See all that butter that was there? Yeah, we need That's that. That's definitely going to make a difference. Do you want to throw the vanilla in or do you want to wait till after this mix? I was originally thinking we'd want to do it once it was all combined, but we kind of need the liquid right now. Okay. Uh, so let's add that. Awesome. So that is one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And those little specks in it are vanilla beans, not bugs. <laughs> I feel like a, the Grinch would have bugs in his vanilla, though. <laughs> All right, I think that's, that's coming together. Again, remember not to overmix. I think that's probably good. I need to stop before it gets too crazy. <laughs> yeah, we don't want it to turn into like a bread loaf or oh, something. <laughs> it, it will. This, this mixer doesn't like to stand up. like my... So here we have green food coloring. We're going to start with six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want to get that perfect Grinch color, so we got to make sure to add it as we need and try and get the perfect green consistency there. And as it bakes, the color will get a little bit lighter. Yeah. Okay, look at that. We're already getting some green in yes. there. Nice. That swirly look is really cool. I would almost say one or two more drops just because once you bake it to, and when we put the powdered sugar on, it's gonna get a little lighter. Okay, yeah, let's do, let's do four more. Okay. One, two, three, four. And this is also great too, if you're wanting to make colored sugar cookies, you can just use green and red food coloring and make two separate bowls of dough, and then you've got green and red sugar cookies for Christmas. One of my tricks, if you kind of hold it in the middle, put it at a high speed, it cleans the beaters off for you which makes it a lot nicer when you're trying to wash dishes. Okay, so the cookie dough is basically done. Definitely looks like the color of a Grinch. Next step is to create that powder mixture that we're going to dip the balls of cookie dough in before we bake them. Here's half a cup of cornstarch. Okay. And here is half a cup of powdered sugar. Awesome. So we're just gonna combine those two. Here's a little baby spoon. Little baby spoon. Okay. We've got two quarter sheet baking sheets. Awesome. Uh, smaller because our oven is a little bit smaller. If you have a bigger oven, feel free to use bigger sheets. Yeah, use a half <laughs> sheet. We love these pre-cut parchment sheets. We don't have to worry about cleaning the cookie sheets as much, so it's really nice. Put your hands just a little bit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use the spoon to start it. What kind of size are we going for here? Let's see. We're going for those three and a half inch cookies. I think that might do it. Did I go too big? That, that's about the size that I did. Okay. Should I put it next to this one? Yeah, and then flat. Oh, we didn't do the important, the most important Oh, piece. we have to dip it. Yeah, so. I forgot. Okay. Let's make a circle. Do you smush it and then dip it? You dip it and then you smush it. Let's do the balls first. And then we'll, and go, then, back then the then we'll go back to dip them and okay. press them. That way we can make sure they're all about the same. I preheated the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, these are getting bigger. Almost at 12. This recipe, I would say, would make 14 cookies. Yeah. We're going to just stick to the 12 since our oven will do this. So. Yeah. <laughs> we have some size things going size on. These are quite a bit smaller. <laughs> I'm going to steal some. This is mine. I made that really big one, too. <laughs> okay, so grab one of your cookies. Okay. Oven is telling us that it's ready to go. We're not <laughs> quite ready for it. So I am covering that whole ball with powdered sugar cornstarch mixture. Just sitting it on the plate. Not too bad so far. No. I don't think we forgot the eggs. Yeah, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Using the flat part of your palm, just okay. push it in. And just do that like to that? all six. Yeah, that's great. Okay. All right, not too bad. Uh, this is Sean's, this is mine. I think yours over here look a lot prettier than mine. Tell us in the comments whose cookies look better. <laughs> Just kidding. I think it's yours already, so. <laughs> Throw that first tray in the oven here. But remember, it's uh, 350 degrees, and then it'll be 10 to 14 minutes, and you'll want to keep an eye on them to see uh, how close they are to being done. We're going to go ahead and do this for 12 minutes, 
um, we'll go to 12 right here and then we'll watch it and add a couple more minutes if we need to. While we're waiting for that first batch to bake, I got our little pieces that I made last night together. Oh, those look way better than the ones I was trying to do. <laughs> oh, let me turn it for you. Do you want to try one of the ugly pieces and see sure. how they taste? I'll go for this ugly heart. Go for this little R. R for replicate the magic, as in the channel you should follow. Mm, that cherry flavor is awesome. No, it's really good. Look, the little hearts come Ooh. off perfectly. Yeah, that's pretty. They have four more minutes. <laughs> oh, they're puffing up a lot. Oh yeah, those are getting really pillowy. There's the first batch. It's like the little candy buttons that you pull off the paper. I feel like whenever you eat those, you pull off a little piece of paper with it and you just end up eating the paper. Or at least I did. <laughs> Maybe we should make those sometime. Nostalgic candies. Yeah. If you can make it raspberry flavor, better flavors. Where's the prettiest one? I feel like that one's really pretty. Okay. <laughs> All right, these are our contenders. Cool. Are they looking done, do you think? They need a little more time. Okay. All right, let's pull these out. Uh, those are looking good. So you can tell that they're getting close to being done when they have a brown edge along the side there. You don't want to let them go too much longer than that because then they'll start to burn. Let's go ahead and throw the other batch in while we're at it. Cool, so we'll let those dry, or dry, okay. let those cool down, and then we'll let the other ones bake, and then we'll be back to attach the little candy hearts and ours, and also to put the ice cream on the ice cream sandwiches. It's not quite as crackly. Yeah, you definitely can see the crackles along the edge um, and more of the powdered sugar, but uh, towards not quite so much. But it looks cool, and it did get the cracks like in the cookie itself, which is cool too. So that could be done to the temperature of the balls before we bake them. Yeah. If you notice, ours were a little bit on the warmer side. Yeah. I wonder if you put them in the fridge or something for a couple minutes, if yeah. they would have a little bit better luck. That one's starting to split. Oh yeah, that looks good. That one in the back left looks good too. Oh, awesome. I didn't smush mine down quite as much. I like how because the powdered sugar melted, it kind of looks like skin. It's kind of creepy looking a little bit. Mm -hmm. It looks good though. It looks like a yummy cookie. Don't put that in. But it looks like skin. Yeah. It looks like yummy crackly skin. You're so good. Those look good. Oh, they smell amazing. Our cookies have cooled. These will be the tops <laughs> of the cookies. These will be the bottoms of the cookies. Yeah. All right, if you printed the guide, the placement of the heart is where I've put it. It's kind of like where a heart would be like on a person. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a dot. Can you put the hearts on? Oh, that's nice. Perfect. The heart the looks really that. good. Ooh, that yeah. heart. And it looks kind of like Grinch skin. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Should we flip Here. these over since they're the bottom? I oh. don't think you flip the cookie upside down. You still use the base of the cookie on an ice cream sandwich. See, look, they do it that way. Okay. I feel like that's how I've seen it, like when you go to buy it at places. Do you do one big scoop or a few smaller scoops? I think one big scoop, right? Yeah, do a big scoop. So we got a big heaping scoop of ice cream. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll be a little careful. Smush it down a little bit more. This was the Yeah, that was the, the winner. winner. Okay. That looks good. So slight. There's my cookie with the R on it and Sean's here with the heart. Alright, should we try them out? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. It's gonna be in my stomach soon. <laughs> mm. So good. <laughs> you can't go wrong with an ice cream sandwich. It's got your classic sugar cookie taste. Delicious ice cream. This so good. This sugar cookie recipe. This would be great by itself. This is so good. The cookies are still soft, but it's still like sturdy enough to hold the sandwich. So it's like a perfect consistency. Definitely a five out of five for me. <laughs> more than a five. So for me, five out of five. Okay, these cookies are so good. Definitely, they are a great recipe if you need to make some cookies for a Grinchy neighbor to hopefully help with that un-Christmas-like attitude. Grinchmas. Grinch yeah, Grinch, un like attitude. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, 
please like it, please subscribe to our channel, please ring that bell down below because then you'll be notified when we post new videos each week. And if you have ideas for things for us to try, or if you tried this recipe and want to let us know how it went, please comment below. We'd love to hear from you. We've shared the recipe on our website, replicatethemagic.com, and we've also put this template for the candy hearts there if you want to go grab that as well. Uh, please feel free to share. Share a link to the website to our YouTube video to any friends that you think might enjoy making these cookies or ice cream sandwiches. Thanks again for watching. Thank you. Merry Grinchmas, everyone. Merry Grinchmas. <laughs>